right now if we apply hot air try to remove the chip what's gonna end up happening is solder is gonna liquefy in this area and by pulling that chip upwards we're gonna end up ripping all those components off because all those components are making a connection with the chip via this glue so what we need to do is we need to cut the glue from the sides and then we can remove the chip then we have to clean the underfill and then solder a new chip here we have two iPads that we need to work on we have iPad 5 we already disassembled the board and the customer said that he's not able to charge the tablet he has to wiggle the cable that's very likely a flex cable issue and this one is a 12.9 second gen or first gen based on the charging cable I know it's a first gen and he said the tablet reboots it turns on for a few seconds and then it reboots so I think we're gonna start working on iPad 5 change the flex cable I've done it like six million times on this channel we're gonna start by removing this black piece of tape so we can expose what's under the flex cable on iPads in case you have not seen any of our videos before that's the charging port right here to replace a charging port on an iPad we have to replace this whole flex cable which solders on to about 68 pins why did Apple choose to do it that way I have no idea this could easily be an FEC connector where you just plug in the flex cable take it out put it in but it's not the case here before we start the video I want to give a shout out to our sponsor PCBWay PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and printed circuit board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication they offer a wide variety of services including 3D printing CNC machining sheet metal fabrication and much more PCBWay is committed to meeting all your PCB needs. They offer quality on time delivery and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards starts at $5 with 24 hours turnaround. Get an instant quote by visiting PCBWay.com or click on the link below and make sure to check them out. Thanks. So we're going to start by removing this black piece of tape. See, look at this. We have to desolder all those pads remove the flex cable which is also connected by glue under the flex cable and we have to make sure not to rip any of the pads and I think the light is too bright everything is washed out and now we have the proper amount of light we're gonna start by adding flux Ampec 559 original Ampec 559 we are a distributor of the flux if you want to buy retail or wholesale, log into our site, northwishfix.com, click on shop, and you can buy all your tools from there. We carry everything, and orders almost always ship out same day. We're going to use low melt solder. And the reason I want to use low melt solder is so that we can remove the flex cable without ripping any pads. That's the safe way of doing it. All right, so let's take this whole piece. We do not need that much low melt solder. But the piece is already small, so I'm not going to use half of a small piece. I just use the whole thing. So we're going to soak those pads with low melt solder. Tap, tap, tap. And you'll see, look at this, you can already tell that the cable is coming out. We did not even apply hot air. But since that flex cable is also connected with glue, we have to differentiate between glue and solder. We need to pull on that cable, but we have to be careful. So let's undo that glue. And we're going to get a spudger, place that spudger in between the board and the cable. Those spudgers are available on our site as a set of six, six pieces. Right. 
Done. The power of flow mount solder. Apply flux. We're going to desolder any leftovers of low melt. We do not want to leave low melt on the board because low melt is fragile and it melts at a very low temperature, about 48 degrees Celsius. So if we kept low melt on the board and we mixed it with unleaded solder or leaded solder, then the mixture will be the average of both numbers. If leaded melts at 200 degrees and low melt melts at 48 degrees, add both of them, divide by two, and that's the new melting temperature. We do not want that. Low melt is also very brittle, very fragile. That's your chemistry lesson for the day. You see how we have glue on the bottom? We need to get rid of all that glue so the cable can sit flush on the board. We do not want any bumps on the board. And look at that board. Better than factory. Very nice. Now comes the fun part. We have the cable right here. And if you notice, we have two windows, a window on the right and a window on the left. So we have to align the windows with the gold pads that you see on the board. Some connectors, they have open windows, which is much easier to work with. But that's what I have for iPad 5 right now. I do not have open windows, so we have to kind of see if the window aligns with the golden pad on the board. This one aligns. What about the other one? We cannot tell. This one aligns. And just like that, right? Both of them align. I'm gonna press on that flex cable. Keep holding, do not let go. Do not move it, do not sneeze, do not talk. I can talk because I'm used to it, but do not do it. We're going to tap, we're going to add some solder on a few pads. Right, and now we can let go, or let's do some more. Maybe we can add more solder here. I'm using the wrong tip, but I just want to add a little bit of solder, and then we'll use the end of that mini tip, which is much better for this job. I can safely let go, and that connector is not going to move. Now we're going to use our end of that mini pen. And if you do not already know, we now have a new version, the red version. The pen comes with three tips. My favorite is the knife tip, but it also comes with the bend tip and conical tip. I use this pen in almost every video. It's meant for jobs like this. And look at this. Look at this. We're going to have to add more flux, but that's okay. Just bear with me. Why so much flux? Why not? Flux is your friend. If you want to achieve better than factory results, you need to use a lot of flux. Can 
and just look at that knife tip. Amazing. We're done. We just need to clean up. And just look at the soldering on this connector. Wow, amazing. Every pad looks the same as its neighbor. Every single one. All we need to do is hand this over to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. All right, so replacing the charging connector alone was not enough. We are reading a fail on the TriStar tester. So what we need to do is replace the TriStar chip. And replacing the TriStar chip on iPad 5s is a nightmare. I'll show you why. The chip is protected with underfill and overfill. And the shield is out. Where is our TriStar chip? Right here. You see it? Look at that protection on the chip. Nightmare. The chip is a nightmare to replace. Not only is the chip too small, but it's also protected with this underfill that spills all the way to the sides. Right now, if we apply hot air, try to remove the chip, what's going to end up happening is solder is going to liquefy in this area. And by pulling that chip upwards, we're going to end up ripping all those components off because all those components are making a connection with the chip via this glue. So what we need to do is we need to cut the glue from the sides and then we can remove the chip. Then we have to clean the underfill and then solder a new chip. We are working with a microscopic chip. This chip is very small. And I always like to compare using a penny. I do have a penny right next to me. That's the penny and that's the chip. The chip is small. Probably about three numbers zero one zero the chip is the size of the zero one zero if you have a penny just look at those numbers and you can kind of estimate how big that chip is so what i'm going to do is hide the fpc connectors just like that Now we're going to bump up heat and we can go a bit down on airspeed. And hopefully we can remove that chip without disturbing all the components nearby. Nice. I pulled that chip upwards and it went that way, upwards. Look at this, we did not disturb this component. We did not disturb this one. We did not disturb this one.
Okay, so the chip made a connection. And we should be all good. All right, so moment of truth. I have a TriStar tester here. I do not trust it too much, but at least we can tell if it's a pass or fail. I went over this long time ago where I discussed how this tool is not always reliable. But before this tool gave us a fail, let's see if we're gonna get a pass. I'm gonna plug it in. Press the test and we are waiting to see if we're gonna get a pass or fail. We wanna see that bar move. And yes, it's a pass. All right. And now I'm just going to do a quick cleanup, hand it over to Big Boss to assemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. Big Boss is done with the reassembly. And the tablet is charging right here. 5 volts, uh, 2.8 amps. Great. We see the Apple logo. Now the tablet was dead. It was not powering on because the battery was zero. So right now we see a charge of 5 volts, 1.7, because the tablet is powering on. It went up to 3 amps. Right, and the charge on the tablet is 2%. Awesome. So it's taking a charge. And we can tell 5 volts at 3 amps. Amazing. Just test touch and the home button. Yeah, go to another page. Now press the home button. Excellent. Awesome. We're done. Thank you, big boss. The boss of all bosses. We have a 12.9 to work on. Currently on my bench. So maybe I'll do a separate video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.